On a January day in New Orleans, the AFL champion Kansas City Chiefs were 13 point underdogs in their Super Bowl IV meeting with the NFL champs, the Minnesota Vikings. It was the conclusion to the 1969 pro football season and the Chiefs completed it that day with a dominating 23-7 victory, led by the game's most valuable player, Lynn Dawson. Go ahead, the mic, Lenny Dawson. Lenny Dawson leads the field. Let it go, Leonard! That's the way to go, Leonard, you've done good, kid. Lenny Dawson, lift from the crowd. One of the great underrated quarterbacks in the history of professional football, Lenny Dawson almost makes you cry. The stuff he's had to take, and the year he's had with a broken hand, a bad knee, spot a dime, but he did it today. I can visualize it. When Hank took me out with a minute and a half or two minutes to go, whatever it was, in the, in the ball game, we had it wrapped up. And just, it was just something like, you know, a weight came off my shoulders, my whole body, you know, because, geez, we finally did it. You know, we talk about it every year, winning the biggest prize there is, and that's the Super Bowl, but we actually accomplished that thing. The 34-year-old quarterback had reached the top of the football world, a spot that seemed improbable just eight years earlier when his career was stymied due to inactivity. Lynn's climb to the pinnacle of his sport became one of the game's legendary tales. The Lynn Dawson story began in the small Ohio burg of Alliance, just east of Canton, the town considered the birthplace of professional football. Lynn excelled at Alliance High School, becoming a sought-after recruit by many college programs. It was Purdue where he connected with a young assistant coach named Hank Stram. Lynn was a three-year starter for the Boilermakers and led the Big Ten Conference in passing his senior year. But unbeknown to Lynn, his plan to sell insurance after graduation would be altered after receiving a phone call from the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers had made him the fifth selection in the 1957 draft. Lynn was headed to the NFL. The Steelers veteran coach duo of Buddy Parker and Bobby Lane left Lynn with little playing time in his first three seasons. Then in 1960, Lynn was traded to the Cleveland Browns, where he appeared in just nine games over the next two seasons. After five years, his professional football career had ground to a halt. But in 1962, a casual encounter with an old friend would change the course of Lynn's life. Hank Stram was the coach of the Dallas Texans, and he was at a coaches meeting in Pittsburgh where I was living at the time, and we had breakfast together, and he could see that I wasn't really happy with what was going on in my life professionally because I wasn't getting an opportunity to play. And he, at that time, says, listen, if you ever get a release from the National Football League, give me a call. It gave me an opportunity to compete for a job with the Dallas Texans. It took time for Lynn to knock off the rust accumulated in five years on the NFL sidelines. But one observer was impressed, the Texans owner, Lamar Hunt. After watching his new passer in the preseason, Hunt personally made the only trade of his career, sending the Texans' previous starting quarterback, Cotton Davidson, to Oakland for the Raiders' first round selection in the 1963 AFL Draft. And Hunt's faith in Dawson was rewarded. The big rush is on, the kick is up, the kick is good! Dallas is the champion! The Texans were the 1962 AFL champions, and Lynn Dawson was named the league's most valuable player. But just months after the title game, Lynn and the Texans would move to Kansas City. There would be three AFL championships, two Super Bowl appearances, one Super Bowl victory, and seven All-Star Pro Bowl appearances for Lynn qualifications that would earn him a return to Ohio and enshrinement in Canton's Pro Football Hall of Fame. In honor he was informed of in 1987 while filming an episode of HBO's Inside the NFL. Lynn's second career broadcasting began even while he was the starting quarterback for the Chiefs. Lynn Dawson became a fixture on Kansas City Television on the nightly news at 6 and 10 o'clock. After his retirement as a player in 1975, he would become a color commentator for NBC and eventually 33 years as the color commentator for the Chiefs radio network. 
but it was a small cable TV upstart that would make his face and voice familiar to football fans in every Hello corner of the country. Welcome to the longest running show in the history of cable television. HBO's Inside the NFL became one of the longest running programs in cable television history. It would change the way fans watched and consumed National Football League games. And as one of the two hosts for 24 seasons, his Emmy Award winning work would lead to enshrinement in Canton once again, this time as a broadcaster. Lynn's storybook life was not easily written. He battled adversity both personally and professionally. But despite the difficulties, he would achieve nearly every accolade possible from his two industries. And through it all, he remained rooted in his adopted home of Kansas City.